Hello, everyone. Uh, we'll get started in a minute or two. Okay, let's get started. Uh, excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our HLPF side event on the impact of war on health and education in Gaza. My name is Miriam Rabi. I head the SDGs Today program at the UN Sustainable Development Solutions Network and will be moderating the first half of this event. This session is organized by the Palestinian Central Bureau of Statistics, SDGs Today, UN ESQA, and the mission of the State of Palestine to the UN. Over the past nine months, PCBS has been issuing daily reports on casualties and injuries in Gaza. To date, 38.2 thousand Palestinians have been killed and 88 thousand have been injured. 65 percent of road networks have been damaged. Only 10 of Gaza's 36 hospitals are partially operational and the student population missed an entire academic year of schooling. Throughout the ongoing, ongoing genocidal violence in Gaza, Palestinian ministries of health and education, along with PCBS, UNESCO, UNOCHA, and many other UN agencies, international organizations, and university centers have been diligently collecting and sharing data on the war's impact across all sectors and populations. Today's session will focus on critical issues of access to education and healthcare. We'll begin with keynote addresses to set the stage for our discussion. I'll provide a brief overview of a story map featuring various data sources illustrating nine months of carnage in Gaza. Following this, we'll move into our panel discussion and participants are encouraged to ask questions using the Q&A box. Uh, member states interested in making statements can indicate their intention via chat for microphone access. Unfortunately, one of our keynote speakers, Dr. Riyad Mansour, uh, ambassador to the state of Palis ambassador of the state of Palestine to the UN, is unwell and unable to join us this morning. We wish him a swift uh, recovery. Uh, and without further ado, I'd like to invite our first keynote speaker. Uh, president of PCBS, Dr. Ola Awad, um, to uh, take the stage. She has spearheaded numerous statistical initiatives internationally, and under her leadership, PCBS has played an instrumental role in documenting and analyzing the devastating impacts of this war. Uh, Dr. Awad, thank you for your leadership, and thank you for joining us today. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mariam, and uh, thank you for all of our partners and uh, um, that, I mean, uh, worked jointly to have this session within the HLPF. Um, and I want to thank also all the um, all the attendees that are joining us in this important session. I know it's morning and afternoon for um, for for most of us. So good afternoon, good uh, good morning to everyone. And thank you for joining us in, in this important session. I wanna say maybe as, um, as a chief statistician from, um, from October um, six until today, it's my first formal um, participation that I, I joined since uh, October last year. And you can't imagine how hard it is for us uh, being a chief statistician working in the field 
and um, going through all uh, what's going on uh, in Gaza Strip and uh, with this um, catastrophe and a real, real genocide. Our panel today, uh, we consider it is of utmost urgency as it coincides with a significant yet tragic, a tragic event of an, of, of an ongoing vicious Israeli aggression against our people in the Gaza Strip. Uh, this aggression, which has been ongoing for the past 10 months now, is a matter of immediate concern. The Gaza Strip, along with the West Bank, is in dire need of our attention and action, as our people have been living in siege for the past 17 years and counting. The implications of this Israeli aggressions are horrific, with tens of thousands of innocent lives lost, mass destruction in infrastructure, and yet to come socioeconomic implications. In addition to Gaza, we are also witnessing a significant escalation in Israeli occupation forces actions in the West Bank. In the West Bank now, we have more than 570 Palestinians have been killed by Israeli occupation forces since October 2023, along with dozens of homes and establishments destroyed by Israeli settlers. As we are considered the National Statistical Office for Palestine, our duty entails uncovering official figures that show the reality that it is on the ground. Our task became more complicated when we had to refer to statistical frames that we used before the Israeli aggressions and all statistical methods we used to apply became invalid. Like, I mean, the labor uh, force indicators in Gaza Strip, um, I mean, the labor force concepts now are invalid and we are working very closely with ILO to define how we can think out of the box to measure a way of the labor force indicators. Despite the ongoing Israeli occupation, um, um, aggressive actions against the Gaza Strip, we at PCBS remain committed to provide accurate and timely data to support decision makers, to support our people and the international community. Since the beginning of the Israeli aggression against Gaza, we have established a special operation room to monitor the direct impact on the Gaza Strip in particular. We immediately launched an interactive portal on our website, updated with real-time figures almost every, every hour on martyrs, injured, displaced people, and other key indicators. Despite the fact that the Israeli aggression has affected all aspects of our lives, our Gaza office uh, was totally destroyed. And five of our... And, and five of our um, dear colleagues were killed with their families due to the Israeli bombing of their houses and places of shelter, including those passed away due to lack of access to medical care. Uh, we at PCBS um, um, published 18 press releases since October 2023, covering various topics such as education, private sector, healthcare access, agriculture, poverty, and starvation in the Gaza Strip. We have also worked with all partners, including international organizations, 
um, we worked uh, tremendously with the private sector and the Palestinian government to utilize uh, the available data. Additionally, we have been also able to maintain a monthly price monitoring system using phone calls to track the surge in goods prices in the Gaza Strip. We are also planning a number of surveys to assess the impact of the Israeli aggression, hopefully when it, uh, once it ends. Our efforts focus on providing critical data to support humanitarian relief efforts, inform decision-making, and raise public awareness of the size of this catastrophe. We hope that by working with our partners and the Palestinian government, we will be able to perform our duty in the best way possible against all odds. In conclusion, I second the call once again for urgent and immediate action to stop the bloodshed in Palestine, particularly in the Gaza Strip. We really need your support wherever you are. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Awad, uh, for your remarks and your tireless efforts um, and providing a picture of the circumstances in which you continue to do your incredible work. Thank you again for being a part of uh, today's discussion. Um, and now we'll move on to our second keynote speaker, Professor Jeffrey Sachs, uh, president of UNSDSN and Columbia University professor, uh, renowned for many accomplishments, particularly his extensive work on sustainable development and global health, including his contributions to addressing the humanitarian crisis in Gaza. Professor Sachs, thank you for making the time to join us during your travels. The floor is yours. Mariam, thank you very much. Dr. Awad, our hearts go out to you uh, and uh, all uh, our admiration for really your heroism uh, in your service to the people of Gaza and the people of Palestine uh, generally and how heartbreaking to hear of the losses of your colleagues, uh, which add to uh, the heartbreak of a genocide taking place in in real time before our eyes, uh, where uh, we have the absolute disgrace and shame that uh, major governments, starting with my own, the United States, which is absolutely complicit in genocide, uh, is a partner in this genocide, cannot uh, see, cannot uh, express truth, even uh, when the worst crime imaginable is is happening. So this has uh, been a period that is absolutely shocking and devastating for all of us. Let me start by saying that we at the Sustainable Development Solutions Network, which is a, a global network of universities around the world, not only stand with you and with the people of Palestine, but whatever we can do, uh, in whatever limited way we can help, we are really at your disposal. Uh, I have a couple of ideas uh, uh, that I'll uh, discuss at, at the end, um, but uh, we have a network of uh, scholars, a network of uh, data specialists that Mariam uh, helps to bring together from around the world. We uh, can also amplify your uh, data and your releases on SDG Today, which is committed to real-time uh, data and the real-time that you are talking about is the life and especially the death of the people of Palestine right now. And we, in, in whatever small way, uh, our work to help you get this information out to the world community, we're, we will be absolutely committed to do so. Uh, I can only say a, a few uh, brief remarks uh, to 
add to what you've uh, already said. First, this is a genocide. Uh, Israel is absolutely in violation of the 1945 Genocide Convention. <clears throat> Your data, uh, we should uh, help to ensure, uh, is in front of the justices of the International Court of Justice uh, and is uh, used by uh, the brave uh, government of South Africa in its uh, initiative to bring Israel to justice in the ICJ. Uh, you are documenting a genocide in real time. We need the court to make its ruling. We need the court perhaps to make another interim ruling. I am not a lawyer with experience at the ICJ, but the ICJ spoke initially about the real possibility that a genocide was underway. Then it gave another interim ruling that uh, Israel was uh, uh, destroying lives and that it had to stop uh, its uh, operations uh, in Rafa. But I think uh, as the days pass, and even as we speak, there are new Israeli operations in northern Gaza, and the news reports talk of uh, bodies left on the streets because they can't even be cleared fast enough uh, with the, the uh, rain of bombs that Israel is, uh, is uh, unleashing right now. So I believe that the ICJ will rule that this is a genocide, but it should do so as fast as possible and based on the information that the PCBS is providing. Uh, I do hope <coughs> that other governments uh, add the United States to uh, the case because the US is without question making this genocide possible. Uh, and I say that in an absolutely literal way, not in its continued uh, political support for Israel, but in providing the munitions uh, and the financing and the intelligence and the direct military support every single day to the IDF to carry out this genocide. So the United States government is guilty of genocide as well. And this is as clear as can be and as shocking as can be uh, we have an administration that uh, is um, seemingly beyond reach uh, in its uh, indecency uh, and its unaccountability. Uh, I have been arguing for months that uh, the UN should immediately uh, welcome Palestine as the 194th UN member state. Uh, on the 1967 borders with capital in East Jerusalem and with control of these Islamic holy sites. Of course, uh, this exactly that resolution was taken up by the UN Security Council uh, in March and the United States vetoed it alone uh, in what otherwise uh, would have been uh, a uh, decisive vote by the UN Security Council. This is more shame on the United States. It is the single last protector of a genocidal state of Israel. And it's a disgrace that it continues in this way. So I urge that that vote be taken again and again and again. And if the United States stands alone and naked as a defender of genocide, well, the world will know. And I believe eventually the American people who are aghast and are absolutely calling for an immediate end of this war and an immediate end of America's complicity in this genocide will rise up against this government, this Biden Blinken administration, which has done so profound damage uh, to uh, the people of Palestine and to the world. So I would urge uh, the UN Security Council to make this vote again, and make it again, and make it again. I think it's time for uh, governments in the Arab region that have previously established diplomatic relations with Israel to end them. 
because I do not understand how diplomatic relations can continue when a process of genocide is underway. Uh, and so there are several governments uh, that have diplomatic relations with Israel, not warm relations, of course, but formal diplomatic relations. I think that should be ended, uh, at least suspended, uh, until this uh, genocidal action ends. I wonder if there are practical things that we can do, Dr. Awad. Uh, one thing that if it's of any use, uh, we are a, a global network of universities, many with online degree programs. Uh, Israel has systematically destroyed every university in Gaza. There are students that are looking for an education. Uh, and uh, if somehow they can have access to uh, digital, uh, uh, to, to uh, if they can have online access, I should say, uh, and have the means to be safe and to study uh, online, I'm sure that we could help facilitate their uh, entrance into some of the universities in our network that provide online degrees. These are generally master's degrees, but if there's some way that uh, we can provide any kind of service in that regard, I would uh, certainly like to know and like to pursue that. When it comes to health care, uh, which has also uh, essentially been destroyed first by pushing the people of Gaza to starvation, uh, and second by bombing the hospitals and systematically destroying the hospitals and bombing the ambulances and doing everything possible to disrupt uh, any kind of uh, health care relief. If there are any ways that digital access uh, to you know the online health services uh, in any way can systematically be useful we have a lot of experience with that and maybe some connections i know that this is not extremely helpful but uh, and there are a lot of people involved that know these things but just to say that our our network uh, would be uh, absolutely uh, available to help support any kind of solutions in that matter as well. Finally, uh, if there is any way that uh, an international network of demographers, uh, of course, who know and respect you deeply and you know them, but if there's any way that we can help bring together uh, a network of demographers to support you or to validate work or to work uh, as you say, uh, when the war stops to uh, do the detailed assessment for history and for justice and for uh, compensation and uh, other uh, matters that will be relevant, please also count on us for that. So I know this doesn't uh, end a war, it doesn't end a genocide, uh, it's, it's our expression of solidarity with you and with the people of Palestine and uh, our readiness to do whatever we can uh, to contribute to solutions. Uh, and I will continue uh, to do whatever I can to help accelerate the political solutions. We need a state of Palestine, we need it now, it could come now, if the United States would stop its blockade of decency and end its complicity in this genocide. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Sachs, for your insightful remarks uh, and for setting the tone uh, for the discussion in today's session. Um, before we jump into the discussion, I wanted to take the opportunity to show the story map that we have prepared. Um, hopefully you can see my screen now. Uh, and this is an interactive uh, platform in which we feature the data that uh, PCBS and various UN agencies and researchers have been publishing. Um, so we'll share the link in the chat so that you can uh, explore the data and some of the content uh, of this living document that we planned to continuously update uh, with the latest data um, uh, in, in the near future. Uh, so just a quick overview of um, 
the story map so you can interact uh, with uh, the data. Uh, there is statistics that PCBS has shared from before the war, so 2022, 2023, so that you can compare some of these statistics uh, with um, the recent um, publications since October 7th. So that is something that you can access through the story map. And um, you can also uh, explore some of the interactive dashboards that, again, share the data sets that PCBS, um, HDX, uh, and other platforms have been uh, publishing. Um, we've also included some information in terms of how this data is being used for decision making currently and uh, in the long term in terms of um, uh, the uh, economic reconstruction and, and sustainable development plans uh, in the future uh, post-war. Uh, there are also, it also highlights some of the challenges uh, and also opportunities for partnerships to enhance uh, data collection and publication. Uh, and there are um, items uh, related to a call to action so that the data and statistical community and beyond it can take uh, upon themselves to, to contribute to, uh, to this work. So um, we'll share the link in the chat and I encourage you to uh, explore the information and the data that is featured in this uh, story map. Mariam, could I say one more yes. word? Yes, please. Uh, I, I, I'm in China. I have to uh, get off, uh, actually, uh, um, so I apologize. But uh, also, I apologize to you, Mariam, because uh, I've been traveling for weeks, so I haven't even had a chance to see the wonderful work you're doing. Uh, and I just want to uh, say a thanks to you, because uh, I'm seeing the story map for the first time. And uh, Dr. Awad, this is uh, the kind of uh, thing that uh, we would like to to do in any way to help you to uh, make the vital information that you're providing known uh, throughout the world. So thank you very much. Uh, thanks to Dr. Awad. Thanks, uh, Mariam. Thanks to everybody uh, on the line and uh, apologies that uh, I'll now uh, uh, have to exit myself uh, for events here in China. So thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, thank you, Dr. Awad, um, both of our keynote speakers for taking the time to, to join us today. Um, I am going to conclude the uh, first segment of the session um, and hand the microphone on to my wonderful colleague, Dr. Wafa Abul Hust. Uh, she is the uh, chief of the economic statistics section at UN Esqua um, and will be moderating the panel discussion. Uh, Wafa, over to you. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mariam, and thank you for the keynote from uh, Dr. Ola Awad and from Dr. Jeffrey Sachs. Uh, we wish Dr. Riyad Mansour was with us, but we will continue uh, this uh, second uh, section or uh, segment of the, uh, of the panel with uh, three speakers that uh, we thank them very much for joining us. Uh, we work together to put the story map with the data that comes from official sources and we complement it from uh, the data uh, that, uh, that is new data that comes from satellite imagery and other sources. So uh, based on the uh, story map and the data that was available in the story map, I would like to uh, invite our panelists. So we have three panelists, uh, Dr. Tari Alami, uh, who is the director and cluster leader of the governance and conflict prevention at UN Esqua. He oversees work on governance, conflict mitigation and development. And uh, they produced a series of study on the socioeconomic impact of the war on Gaza. So uh, Dr. Tare, uh, I think, yes, if uh, you can show your video uh, and thank you very much for joining us. Our second panelist, is uh, Dr. Nafa Asaf, who is the Deputy Minister of Education in the uh, Palestinian Ministry of Education and Higher Education. Uh, although they have such, uh, you know, big um, problems and uh, they're looking after immense uh, assistance to, uh, to, to the people there, we are thankful that uh, he joined us. Uh, and the third panelist is Dr. Huda Laham, uh, the director of the Palestinian Health Information Center at the Palestinian Ministry of Health. 
So uh, I, I hope uh, you all can see our panelists and we will share their uh, short bios in the chat. So we have more time for discussion and uh, uh, you know, for getting questions from, your, uh, from the audience. So uh, I just wanna ask our uh, manager of the Zoom if you know, uh, our participants can see the panelists. So we can start the questions. Yes, you're all set to proceed. All right, thank you very much. Um, so uh, also I think participants would like to have the link uh, to the story map so they can follow on uh, you know, the, the questions we are um, uh, handling today. So I, I think the uh, first thing that comes to mind uh, and that people you know, following uh, this all over the world the first question would come, what are the current conditions of access to health and education in Gaza? And uh, what is the impact of war on these two sectors thus far? So maybe I, I, I start with the uh, representative of the ministries of health uh, and of education. So uh, Dr. Nafa Asa, uh, can you um, tell us and tell the audience how are you following and can you tell us about the current uh, conditions in Gaza now? Thank you, Afa. Thanks for the invitation, for the opportunity. <clears throat> it is uh, our duty to speak to uh, our friends across the world to put them on what is the education uh, faces in addition to the different sectors, but I'm representing the education, so it's very important to uh, let the world know what is uh, what our students faces. Now, if I the question is about Ghazi, so if I if you may allow me to give some numbers to so that uh, our audience can put our my my speech on perspective. Uh, we have in in Ghazi. 630,000 students, school students, 630,000 students, and 88,000 uh, university students. Uh, we have also 307 school buildings, which serve, which serve about 417 schools. So that means we have about 110 schools have two shifts. So buildings, we have 307. On uh, uh, practice, we have 417 schools. This is a governmental schools. Uh, of course, we have the Onorwa, which uh, have also, they have more than uh, 250 uh, schools as well. Now, the current conditions that the 630,000 students, uh, school students and the 88,000 university, uh, 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 university students, they have been prevented from their rise of education since 7 of October. Of the 307 buildings, we, ha we have 287 schools school buildings has been damaged. So we lost almost 80-85% of our school buildings. The remaining uh, have been used as shelters for the families who uh, been moved from their uh, houses. Currently, we have almost 10,000 students lost their lives. I'm talking students, schools and universities, and more than 700 school teachers and 105 professors uh, lost their lives in the current war. More than 15,000 students are with disability. This is the numbers that we got from Ghazi. Of course, the situation there is difficult, so this is an estimate numbers of our losses in terms of teachers, in terms of students, and uh, in terms of the school uh, buildings. What we're doing actually uh, since the 
almost second or third week of the aggression uh, in Gaza, we started working with different partners. It's our duty not to provide education. It's difficult to provide education, but it is the most important that the trauma that student faces there to try to mitigate the, its impact on uh, on the on the students and on families. So what we 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 started since the third week, talking to the different partners uh, to implement through our teachers. We have teachers w w uh, that has been trained uh, on psychosocial support. So they are uh, many uh, of our partners have supported us to. Uh, held uh, psychosocial support in different uh, uh, locations in Gaza, wherever we can have a, a safe places. Uh, that's the only thing that we provided. We don't provide education because it's difficult. It's not safe. We uh, even the psychosocial centers or whatever you want to call it. Uh, uh, we have, uh, uh, yeah, about maybe a month or six weeks ago. We had a center which has been bombed by the Israelis, and we lost six of the students who were in that uh, on that center. So it's difficult and sensitive issue that we need to gather the students and provide them with with psychosocial, try to to provide to to support them. Uh, uh, but it's also difficult for us uh, because whenever there is a loss, you know, people look at uh, at the ministry who try to gather those students uh, uh, yani it's, it's a very very difficult situation we face there uh, we have also the other issue or the other uh, uh, element that we provided there uh, we uh, bought uh, by the amount from the ministry of education by the amount 2.2 million us dollar uh, some stationery, some uh, stories for the kids uh, uh, to uh, also uh, make the students like paint uh, to express themselves. Also, this is a type of psychosocial support we're trying to to provide to our students. In terms of the high education, it is it it was a bit different. What we have agreed that we opened the uh, the universities in the West Bank. They opened a, a, a registration for them uh, by different subjects. We try to focus on the students who are in the, the in their final year, but we have also uh, students from the different level of their studies. I know so far there are more than 20,000 students registered in the uh, West Bank universities who went through uh, distance learning uh, to, to, to finish a certain subjects. We try to expand. Uh, it's it's the, the 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 system. The logistics is not easy, but the universities here in the West Bank start to use to it, uh, start to communicate with the, with different universities who has the the technology and the infrastructure to expand and to try and accommodate uh, more students uh, from Gaza to uh, give those students uh, hope. Uh, that they can finish uh, their studies at the universities. We communicated with different universities in Jordan, in Qatar, in, in different countries, uh, Pakistan, uh, Uzbekistan, different countries. They, they, they uh, express their will and their uh, wish to, to uh, receive and to support our students are uh, talking about the university students. We're talking with different countries, South Africa among them, to uh, try to accommodate those students and give them hope that they can finish their studies at the universities. And the last thing I, will to, I want to mention that uh, all students who left Gaza, now we cannot, as a Ministry of Education, we don't have the logistic to provide this. But we lost. Uh, Sorry. Yes, we lost you. Okay. Maybe until Dr. Nafa comes back. Sorry. Yes, can you just I'm for back? people, for students can, can who, who left what? Gaza, for students who left Gaza, can you continue? Yes. Yes, whoever left Gaza, we opened the, uh, our West Bank schools. We accommodated the uh, uh, distance learning for them. So far, we uh, uh, gave uh, 
يعني the opportunity to, uh, the opportunity to about 11,000 students who left Gazi. Uh, we opened virtual schools to them in the West Bank. The teachers here provided the education uh, during the, uh, uh, the last five or six months. So we finished with them and we have currently another about 8,000 registered to open virtual schools for them in the coming uh, month or so. We just uh, doing some preparation and okay. we trying to support the, the infrastructure. And uh, from those who left Gazi, also we have 1,400 students uh, uh, went through the Tawjihi exam. Uh, those okay. 1,400 students in 29 countries ac across the world. So wherever a student uh, left from Russia to Philippines, to uh, Egypt, Algeria, Tunisia, the different Gulf countries and the EU, uh, any student went to the embassy and said that he is in the 12th grade and he wants to uh, to go to write the exam, to sit for the exam. We provided all the possible uh, needs that he, need, he, he needs and uh, they wrote the exams. Fortunately, yesterday, all of them finished their exams. And Thank alhamdulillah, uh, all of them are happy. This is Thank the you, situation. Yeah. Maybe we, we we were having another question on on you know the, the the future how we can address I mean the future needs, but thank you very much and all the efforts I think maybe uh, in in the whole world uh, only in Gaza students were not able to attend a full school year nine months of students not being able to go to their schools not being able to uh, to you know to to finish their program uh, schools and universities. Uh, so now maybe Dr. Huda uh, Laham, uh, also the the tragic, the tragic uh, sector of health and health services. What is the current situation? And we'll leave like one question for the future uh, plans, okay. if you don't mind, yeah. please. Thank you, Wafa. Thank you for this amazing uh, event. Uh, and also the story map uh, presented by Maryam. It will be helpful for us in the future. Uh, now I will talk about the functionality of the health system and Israel attacks on health uh, in health uh, healthcare and how all this affect people access to health. Uh, in the West, in Gaza Strip, we have 90 centers uh, of primary healthcare, and only 30 uh, percent of them are uh, functioning now. We have 10 uh, field hospitals, and only three field hospital hospitals are functioning. For uh, the hospitals, we have 38 hospitals and uh, 25, uh, 25 hospitals are not functioning now. And the remaining 13 hospitals are partially accessible due to insecurity and physical barriers and partially functioning for many reasons. Uh, the reason for not uh, fully functioning is the damage of many words of these hospital by Israel attacks. Uh, these hospitals are operating with limited capacity, overhead with patients. The expense rate is more than uh, 200, 200, is about 300% for patients uh, in, uh, in the patient, in patient wards and ICU. Uh, of course, this crowdedness uh, will affect the safety of patients and the quality of treatment. Therefore, evacuation of patients and uh, severe injured people is one of our priorities. Uh, moreover, uh, uh, shortages of power in this hospital affect its functionality, medicine, shortages of medicine, medical supply, labs, uh, material, and blood units. Israel continuous attacks, insecurity, and the closure of crossings make it impossible uh, to restock hospitals most of the time with critical medicine and supplies. Uh, moreover, we have shortages on medical staff. Uh, from the beginning of this war, we, there have uh, been uh, about uh, 400, more than 400 attacks of healthcare. Israel attacks deliberately attack, target the medical uh, staff. More than 500 martyrs of medical staff, thousand injured, more than 300 medical staff arrested, and sometimes two third to death in prison, like Dr. Persh and, uh, and recently Dr. Rentisi. And we don't know the fate of other prisoners from medical staff. 
unsanitary condition in hospital, unlimited access to healthcare, patient risk, risk infection, face, forcing doctors to amputation as a saving measures, knowing that many could be avoidable in better conditions. We all see a video of a child going through amputation surgery without anesthesia, and we all hear the child, his father, and the doctor were crying. The attacks led to uh, about, uh, about uh, 130 ambulances damage. One of these ambulances is ambulance with two medical staff who had gone to rescue the little girl, Hindrajab. Uh, all were killed by Israel attacks, uh, with more than 30 bullets were found in the small body of Hind. Also, the hospitals in, the, in Gaza Strip facing the shortages of medicine and supplement led to the death of 34 children with malnutrition. Moreover, there is about eight children admitted to hospital due to acute malnutrition. The closure, the closure of uh, crossing and prevention of humanitarian aids will make these children facing the threat of death. In addition, about 1,000 patients need dialysis in the dialysis unit, which are damaged by Israeli attacks. Evacuation of patients have been done for about 5,000 patients, and reports indicated that half of them uh, are cancer patients, uh, and they were evacuated due to the uh, fact that uh, the shortages of chemotherapy, radiotherapy. But every year in Gaza, there is a more than 2,000 new cancer cases. This means that we're supposed to have now about 1.5 thousand new cancer cases not receiving adequate diagnosis, if diagnosed, or not receiving their, their chemotherapy or biotherapy or radiotherapy. About the primary health care, only say about 70% 70, 70 of primary health care centers are not functioning. This means not all children have access to vaccination, which probably will cause re-emerging of communicable diseases in the future. The continuous displacement of about 1.7 million of the Palestinian uh, make, make it uh, make seeking safety is preferable to seeking vaccination, in addition to lacking of health points and centers in the newly displaced area. The 30% of still functioning primary health care centers are also overwhelmed by a large number of patients. We have, uh, since the beginning of this, were 1.6 million visits uh, to, to the primary health care. Most of them are emergency cases. According to WHO and WH, we have 1 million patients suffered from acute respiratory disease, half million from motor diarrhea, and about 81,000 from jaundice, probably due to hepatitis A, all, uh, all, which all directly linked to inadequate sanitation conditions they are living in due to displacement, consumption of unsafe water. The prevalence of these diseases is anticipated to increase if we cease problem are not solved. Thank you. Thank you, Hoda, for this. Thank you, Hoda, okay. for this. I think we will have uh, another round. But you spoke about uh, uh, like the, the medication and services cannot cross. So maybe Dr. Tarek now can tell us a little bit okay. because uh, Esqua did uh, reports and, and brought this up on, uh, you know, if we take the, the health and education sector and you know, like the um, the impacts uh, on these sectors from your point of view, Tari, and from Esqua's reports, what would you like to tell our audience? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, greetings from uh, Beirut uh, to uh, everyone. Let me start by uh, emphasizing and iterating that this war on Gaza is actually another chapter in the 57 years of occupation and 17 years of blockade uh, resulting in uh, uh, immense suffering that must end uh, now. Uh, in this context, uh, my intervention, uh, uh, and to answer your question, uh, uh, Wafa, uh, I will highlight uh, 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 the need to start thinking about the effects of this uh, genocide or the current Israeli 
onslaught on future uh, uh, generations. Uh, let me start with the uh, destruction of the health and education uh, facilities as uh, you know, uh, detailed by uh, my fellow panelists, uh, uh, Nafa and, and uh, Huda. Uh, uh, the destruction of health facilities and educational facilities has profound long-term uh, uh, impact on Gaza's uh, future uh, generations. Uh, education, as you all know, is a fundamental building block for economic mobility and social development. The 287 schools uh, that uh, 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 Mr. Assaf was uh, referring to uh, that have been destroyed this means that children in Gaza have lost critical learning and personal development opportunities this year. The right of next generations to quality education will also be affected. Uh, uh, the collapse of the health infrastructure translates into a rise in preventable diseases and mental health issues. In the immediate, medium, and long terms, to speak of public health crisis would be an underestimation right now. The war on Gaza will have indirect health implications beyond the direct harm from this war. Even if the war ends today, there will continue to be many indirect deaths in the coming months and years. And these will be due to uh, reproductive, communicable, and non-communicable diseases where the total death toll is expected to be considerably higher. This is mainly due to intensity of conflict and the destroyed health uh, uh, infrastructure. Uh, according to the newly published uh, uh, article in the British journal Lancet a couple of days ago, where uh, in, in, in conflicts, such indirect death ranges from three to 15 times the number of direct deaths. So applying a conservative estimate of four indirect deaths per one direct death, and I took actually the latest data, which is 38,815 deaths uh, uh, reported. It is not implausible to estimate that up to 194,000 Palestinians or even more death could be attributable to the current war on Gaza. And using the 2022, a population, this would translate into 8.2 percentage of the total population in the Gaza Strip have been uh, uh, killed. A population deprived of education and health, of course, is less capable of driving uh, growth and innovation. Instead, will uh, 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 we should expect prolonged economic stagnation and uh, uh, aid uh, dependency. And ultimately, the destruction of Gaza's health and education systems compounds the destruction and erosion of a human capital, affecting all aspects of life today. On the economic front, a poorly educated and unhealthy population is simply less productive. The lack of skilled labor and widespread health issues would pose significant challenge to prospects of, of uh, 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 economic uh, growth. Limited access to education and health facilities also, as individuals lack the qualifications and health to secure stable, well-paying job, this will compound uh, 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 aid uh, dependency. Uh, Children in Gaza suffer from uh, PTSD and other mental health issues affecting their cognitive and emotional development. And therefore, conflict-related trauma affects cognitive and emotional development, which can impede learning and social integration, of course, in the, uh, in the future. I mean, just imagine that all children under 17 years of age in Gaza today have never lived a single day without being besieged and had already gone through five major military escalations. The psychological impact of war can extend to future generations and therefore perpetuating a cycle of trauma and reduced uh, uh, human capital. 
What is unfolding now in Gaza is unprecedented in so many ways, and hence understanding its implications for its population and on its next generation is difficult to fathom. When we at Esquad tried to chart the impact of war on multidimensional poverty and human development, the effects were off the charts, and this is the first few days of the war. To recover after this monumental scale of this death, destruction, and deprivation, and to mitigate its impact on this and on new generations, we at Esqua believe firmly that any development recovery effort, especially in Gaza, must be based on more contextualized approach that is structurally different. That is, three points. Recovery and development efforts must be led by Palestinians, guided by their identified priorities and needs. The second, development strategies must address the unique challenges posed by the prolonged occupation aimed at de-development and reduce dependency on Israeli economy. And the third point, Recovery efforts must challenge Israeli policies that hinder humanitarian assistance and violate international law. Reducing the risk of this lost generation of Gazans or mitigating such loss should take priority in all assistance rendered to Gaza, as we are starting to see famine manif manifesting itself the urgency to act to hold its spread cannot be uh, uh, pressing. Mm -hmm. Let me conclude here, uh, my colleagues, uh, by uh, 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 saying, let's be clear. None of any recovery can happen if Israeli restrictions on movement of goods and people are not lifted. Reverting back to the pre-October 7 situation in this respect will only mean further deterioration from what is now an unprecedented catastrophic situation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tari. Thank you very much. And uh, you know, you put, you said like, how, what are the conditions for uh, a recovery and uh, you know, how we can move ahead. Uh, I, I want to note that in the story map, we, man, we refer to the resilience of Palestinian people. And uh, this is important because, uh, you know, in education, in health, in many other sectors, uh, they have the capability when, you know, when the right support is provided uh, to get back and, and work very hard to reach, uh, you know, the, the level they wanted to reach. So the resilience is important. And uh, what you mentioned also, uh, and you wrote it in the reports of ESQA, that the, this uh, war, this uh, frequent and, and uh, you know, uh, the impactful war is multi-layer, uh, intergenerational, multi-sectoral. So it's, it's, uh, the, the impact is a huge. Uh, and you mentioned and you spoke about the uh, human capital and intergenerational and then the uh, multi-sectoral impact. Uh, I want to come to the data data issue and then uh, just to say that uh, since we worked with PCDS for a long time and uh, mentioning that um, uh, PCBS and the statistical system in Palestine is a strong system, although it is a more recent than in the other regions, uh, they follow the international standards, they coordinate, they bring, uh, they, 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 they are very active at the uh, international level. And then we can say that the data they produce is reliable uh, official statistics. So maybe uh, just quickly, because we are really like, uh, we have very little time left. I want to bring up this data issue and the trusted data in, in Palestinian figures. So maybe Ola, if you are still with us, it just to mention that um, at the national level, the statistical system of Palestine, uh, just in two minutes, because I know you coordinate uh, the statistical system uh, and the national uh, official statistics. Thank you, Wafa. I cannot start. Yeah, now they just allow me. <laughs> uh, 
Okay. So thank you so much, Wafa. I don't want to take so much time, but it's so much important. And this is part of my answering uh, to the chats. It's so much important to cooperate and collaborate. We are talking about a statistical system where the national statistical organization is a main player, but it's not the only player. I mean, I mean, our success is how much we cooperate with our government in actually in in um, uh, in in planning with them, in getting their needs, in in working towards the developing of statistical system. We have so much success working with the Ministry of Education, with the Ministry of Health in Palestine and with the rest of the ministries. But we have really, really success stories that we are so proud of this kind of cooperation and the complementary work that we are doing in order to get our official statistics on board. I, in addition, now with this tragedy and horrific, uh, um, uh, um, what is happening in Gaza, uh, I mean, sometimes, I mean, we reach that even the, con the concepts, the international standards concepts are not reliable anymore. Um, so also, I mean, our work with you as UN ESQA with the, and with the rest of the UN agencies, and also as uh, uh, Jeff mentioned, I mean, working even with academics, I mean, we had, we were really fortunate enough that we had our census data um, based on GIS maps. But I mean, with, with, the, with the destroyed building and the destruction we had in Gaza, I mean, uh, it was really even beyond our capacity, although, I mean, we are so, I mean, uh, we are considered one of, uh, of, um, of the strongest institutions in the Arab region and even strong institution worldwide. But still, it's such beyond our capacity what happened in Gaza as, as I mean, as a statistics, but also our cooperation with the private sector. I'm so proud working with the telecommunication company and with the cell phone companies, and we succeeded working with them on the displacement. So, I mean, my message is the kind of co uh, um, uh, complementary work that we do uh, together in order really to make a difference and to provide the official uh, statistics on board in such really horrific time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shaila. We are aware of you know this national coordination and like we said, to provide really trusted data that uh, you know other organizations can use and uh, for policy and for the recovery. And I just want to mention uh, the work uh, that to integrate this data from satellite imagery, from the census and survey data, from PCBS. And, and from other possible sources that, uh, that are available, especially when you wanna go in the field, like you said, to do a survey in the field to assess uh, the needs uh, on the ground. Uh, I wanna uh, move from the data and just for, for a quick uh, question for our panelists, uh, to go for the um, uh, day after, or uh, we're hoping for a ceasefire uh, as soon as possible, and how are we ready to go ahead? So maybe I will ask Dr. Nafa, uh, as Ministry of Education, what are the strategies and priorities that you put that when we can, how, what are we going to do uh, when, you know, when, when the war stops? And it will be the same for the Ministry of, uh, of Health. Dr. Nafa, Fadal. Thank you. Okay. Uh, actually, we started uh, almost... Uh, uh, after the war start, uh, started, or this genocide started, uh, putting our plans to uh, resume, resume the education system. However, the destruction and the education genocide that has been committed by the Israelis uh, forced us to change the, the plan over and, you, and over. But we have, uh, as we have worked with different partners who, who are uh, interested in the education system in Palestine, with the different uh, also ministries uh, prepared for the needs of uh, of our schools just to give you an indication we we need 4500 school rooms for two shifts for example this is ready now we are working with different international agencies like unesco unicef uh, some of the different countries to uh, secure uh, either way to, to secure a, a legal school which which is a design that we have uh, worked with uh, with turkey or, uh, or to 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 secure tents instead of the schools 
we have a, 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 a two week plan that after two weeks, I mean, to, to scan with the, uh, uh, where the students have been reallocated uh, to decide where we need to build the school. We are communicating with our uh, teachers there where they've been, of course, moved to also be connected with them and to be ready to uh, resume the education. Uh, so our plan is there. We uh, update the plan almost every two weeks because you know there are certain uh, number of days that we need to give the students uh, according to the UNESCO standards to uh, allow them to move to the next level of the of their uh, of their uh, uh, school life. So we're working on that. We are ready uh, on the on, on our, our plan and all the infrastructure that that, that we need. Uh, ready, we develop packages for the students instead of using textbooks, and we have a full uh, psychosocial program for the teachers and for the students. Before we start actually education, we need to build them uh, uh, from from the trauma that they they have faced. So we have signed an agreement with different psychosocial uh, support uh, uh, institutions, NGOs who who working on this field to. Uh, implement our plan in psychosocial and in the education, formal education, we're ready with the different uh, needs. Now, all of that depends. Of course, this genocide needs to be stopped and to allow us to enter uh, the, the, uh, 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 the the schools, the uh, legal schools, tents, and the different furniture and the packages that we have developed to, to send that to Razi. Uh, hopefully, uh, if that if the incubation allow us, we will start within three to four weeks our formal education with the psychosocial support uh, to all the students and teachers. Thank you, Dr. Nafa. And like you said, it's such a complex crisis where students have moved, teachers are not there, schools, and so it's so complex. And to put things together. Uh, counting on maybe new technologies for education, support and partnership from the region, from other, um, uh, you know, actors in the field. So uh, maybe thinking differently on how to provide the education services uh, to other students. Uh, also for the uh, health services, I think, uh, yeah, it's more also yes. complicated and you need, you need the physical thing to provide. Yes. To, uh, of course, our strategy is a priority for the Ministry of Health. Of course, we must have a, a strategy for at least three to four to five years uh, to be implemented with all partners in uh, the West Bank and Gaza Strip. But uh, what we need now is a recovery plan. Reconstruction and rehabilitation depends on a new assessment and evaluation of the health system in Gaza after ceasefire. There was a um, an evaluation done at the beginning of this year by United Nations and the World Bank, and they estimated that the cost of damage is more than uh, 18 billion, and uh, the cost for health will cost about uh, half billion. Uh, but uh, this assessment was done at the beginning of this year, so another assessment must be done for a recovery plan. But from the data available from the BC, BCBS and from other sources of data, uh, we put our priorities. First of all, find alternative, alternatives to the mental health centers. We are planning to have at least 30 mobile, 30 mobile clinics, six field hospital, uh, evacuation of the patient uh, with, severe, with severe conditions. There is about uh, 25 applications for evacuation and only less than 5,000 evacuated. So this needs uh, international intervention to facilitate the transferring process and uh, receiving patients uh, in hospitals outside Palestine. Having more more rehabilitation centers and searching and searching for funds for prosthesis. More specialized medical mission are needed in Gaza. And now there is a number of medical missions, but we need more, and we need more after a ceasefire. To, uh, to because we are facing uh, shortages of medical staff and, speci and specialization in Gaza. Having more specialized me mental health services for children 
As Dr. Tarek mentioned, all Gazan children exposed to traumatic experience of war uh, and the uh, and the consequence of uh, of which will last a lifetime. So it's important to insist in the subject, mental health services. Having a new safe delivery centers, now there is no safe delivery centers, no pre prenatal or postnatal care for pregnant women and mothers, and working on providing productive health services. Also, we must work on access of humanitarian aids and medical supplies, treatment, medical supplies. This is the priorities, the priorities of the Ministry of Health. Yeah. Thank you, Hoda. Maybe like a follow up on the story map, maybe we can put like what are the things, like the priorities that the ministries have put. And we have to wrap up. Maybe you allow me just for Tari a final thought and we have to close. Uh, we will see if we have any question from the audience that's urgent, but Tari, just a closing remark from your side. Yeah, thank you very much. I would like to just add to uh, uh, Ola's point on the importance of, of uh, data, uh, where it is really imperative actually to uh, document the nature of the suffering caused by this war on Gaza and to document the violations of the international humanitarian uh, law. Uh, accurate documentation is, is vital for safe uh, guarding human rights and accountability, as well as to inform policy makers and the public on the uh, impact of war and, and uh, uh, therefore uh, help in terms of the policy implications in terms of uh, services needed to address their uh, needs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tari. And thank you. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Ola, for the keynote and Jeff who left us. I leave it to Mariam if there's anything urgent uh, that we have to answer. And apologies if we uh, went beyond the time. Thank you, Mariam. Back to you. Thank you, Wafa, and to all of our esteemed panelists. Um, I wish we had more time to continue this very important discussion, but uh, our collaboration in this work doesn't conclude uh, with this session. Um, so we'll continue uh, to communicate updates through our various platforms. And uh, if we did miss a question, um, feel free to follow up via email, and we'd be happy to connect you uh, with um, either uh, the panelists or the keynote speakers. Thank you uh, to Dr. Awad. Um, I know Jeff left, but a uh, special thanks to Professor Sachs as well, uh, to our esteemed panelists, to our wonderful moderator, um, and uh, to all of our participants for taking the time uh, to join this discussion today. Uh, and with that, um, and with hope for an immediate ceasefire, we'll wrap up the session. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.